may be the same after you buy that Jimmy Rayner. <laughs> That's right. He makes you look a lot, a lot better. Not to overstate things, it's going to be cool to see how popular uh, he is next week. Of course, also, uh, that extra ban going to be coming in pretty handy. Oh, yes. With that Globe of Annihilation also coming next week. I think it's possible. But moving on, 2-0 Tempest. They pick BOE. Because they want, seems like Ten Blossom still wants to have that first pick, but I think they really have to step up from the drafting, which wasn't too bad, I would say, in Dragon Shard compared to game one. They did get right. that Mathurian, which was okay, but against what Tempest was doing, they just need to get every puzzle piece together and complete it right now, or else it may just be the end of the series right here. Well, I mean, get game one, to be fair, the draft. I mean, you can't really call it good or bad because they were going for, like, no, an was, idea. It was bad. It was bad. It was okay, old... okay, okay. You can't call it bad then. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to be diplomatic over here. But either way, things are getting better, right? Game 2 did look very, very good. But what is happening here, G Clef? It is BOP. Okay, and okay. Hanzo is banned. And Tempest, they've learned. They've listened. They know what to do. They're a Korean team. Yes. They're going, that Hanzo BOE. they're going for a hard mode HCC where instead of, you know, they, they know they can win if they get all the strong uh, heroes, but but let's let's just change things up a little bit. Okay, uh, so a different way of going through the draft phase, and this gives Blossom kind of the same chance they gave Tempest in game one. But there's no reason, no actual reason to take it over some other things like Gleaming. Right. Or right. no attempt. Trying to fight with my brain saying Artanis, Bala. To say that out loud in HEC Korea. No, I can't do that, brain. <laughs> Hanzo is the only one in BOE. Give, it, give me back Vala. I was watching, uh, what is it, HTC EU. They do that stuff all the time. They will actually have Tracer in this case. Okay, uh, we did get a chance to see Tracer come out uh, yesterday. Uh, to great effect, I thought. It's not always you get a chance to see Tracer out here in HTC Korea. So yeah, this is another. Uh, this is the patch where Tracer got another minus one, plus one on the cooldown of the blink. adjustment. Uh, yeah. Minus one basic attack damage, which is pretty significant, is what Korean pros are uh, saying now. I think that was just enough to bring her down, so you don't really pick her every time. Certainly not an every time pick, but good to see uh, every once in a while. Just the right amount, right? There was a while when it was Tracer every single game, and I'm like, okay, well, this is just a little bit too much. But uh, now much uh, much adjusted. So back into uh, the band phase. What do you expect to see from Tempest here? Maybe a ban on Tastar? I don't think that's too likely from Blossom, so... Sniping onto Wiz's hero pull plays in this case, which means that uh, Tempest will very likely to take Irel, so Blossom might as well just counteract with a Irel ban that is uh, still possible, though Irel was not really picked up yet. Uh, gonna do H uh, HGC instead, they ban the league. Uh, no, HTC. ETHS. Uh, e a, B, C. C. Yes. D, E, F, G. I don't know. I tried really hard the second time and it failed even worse. So I'm just going to try even less and maybe that'll make it work better. A, B, C. Whichever language. E, T, C. Etc. Yeah. So he's out of here. Uh, instead, that does leave uh, URL open. Uh, a good pick, I think you can say, on most battlefields, but. It's not just like a, an auto pick, right? Same thing for Phoenix. Well, Cyan is also thinking super hard. Just like That's me about off the, the screen. The hardest think I, look it's, I have it's, ever it's, seen. He's thinking one, possibly looking for the counters. See, they do have Irel, so for Blossom banning ETC, a ba targeting signs ETC, I don't think it was actually. The perfect call because they can't really deal with Irel too much. We didn't really see Blossom acting perfectly against against Tempest Irel in, in the second game. I mean, we saw Blaze's way to deal with it, but it's not available anymore. So here's where we get a chance to see what Blossom 
might have predicted. You know, game one, they thought they had a way to deal with giving away all uh, the very strong heroes that they kind of knew Tempest would go for. But this time, uh, they'll have to show that they actually can do that. Otherwise, we get yet another HGC Korea 3-0. What? False that is actually a little unexpected from my point of view on Tempest because against Tracer, false that may just go die one one v one. Kind of easy to actually catch that false that, so but we're playing lockdown very likely has to be careful a little bit more in this case. And a crawl, Tyrio. Okay, uh, not exactly what I expected. I, every time I see Thrall, is still a uh, little bit of a surprise, just because there was a while we, we didn't have a whole lot of that. But and I, I think the Tyrael makes a little bit more sense. Uh -huh. And you would, uh, we would have a lot of question marks in the chat saying, what, Tyrael? They already have a Muradin, but this is for them to have the extra shield onto Tracer. Mm -hmm. they, don't really have one, they don't really want to have Tassadar. They want something else that can actually function as another tool to actually get the teamfight win which is Sanctification post 10. I think that's what they're looking for. And gets the shield onto the Tracer if she's nearby. I think that's the reason why instead of Task Start, went with the Tyrio. Also having Thrall as a solo lane that can continue. For the first part, their four-man seems like they're just gonna wave clear and defend. Not, nothing's really going to happen. As long as Tracer actually gets the kill with the Pulse Bomb. So a lot more pressure onto whoever is going to play that Tracer now. Not what I expected. For Blossom, they are all about trying new things. They did that game one, and it really, really did not work out. For Tempest, they are totally okay with stock standard, but this won't be standard for them for, for them either. Going with Diablo as their final pick. Needed someone super tanky in the front line. And they're already pretty okay with the wave clear, so, so they don't really need the Johanna. I think it was uh, debatable that maybe he just went for the blind and to block damage on from Thrall and also Tracer at the same time. But that's only if you have all them, all of them lined up. So gets that Diablo. Also has a pretty good CC. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that ETC ban, I, I we'll see if that really winds up kind of biting them. I don't think they gained a whole lot, but they did give up uh, specifically that URL. And so they, all, they also didn't pick like just a straight up, okay, heavy solo lane against it. So I, I do think that'll be a, continue to be rather, a consistent source of strength for Tempest. For Stem Tempest, they have quite a few of those. So let's get, a, get out onto what could be our last map of the series. You know, I do think that when they were coming up for the name on this map, it was like the Battlefield of Eternity, but but games actually do end on this map, so you know how eternal really is it? Oh, it's it's we play on this map to finish the fight between them. Ah, so we are what makes the eternal battlefield not eternal anymore. Well, I think that is the reason why I play this map. We're getting a little bit metaphysical, but mm -hmm. safe to say that I'm excited to be back on this, especially as our final, uh, what could be our final map. Realistically, it does seem like Tempest are kind of set to make yet another 3-0 in their pocket, but you know they have already shown that out of the top three teams, they are uh, pretty mortal, giving up a loss last week. See if Blossom can take yet another one. Oh, and you see Bribe from Falstad. Okay. Wasn't expecting that 100%. <laughs> uh, hmm? I mean, why do you think they would go for that uh, as because a you can't really, specific pick? You can't really... Of course you can if you create some angle, but it's really hard against the T-Wheel comp down here. Four, uh, four men with the sustain from Mary Day's mouth. You can't really find the kill unless something crazy happens from uh, Blossom actually making a critical mistake. So instead, just want to stack and take Bribe instead. I think that's also a reason why they went for Falstead in this game. Not necessarily the... Normal reason you would go for it, but now, oh, Tempest, they are setting up lockdown over the Targeting wall. Matthew Vian. Got and that orb damage nicely geez. done, perfectly timed. Yeah, and it blows Merry Day apart, just doesn't even stand a chance. Uh, the flight out is actually executed perfectly as well, and Tempest, they get in, get the kill, and get out unscathed. Sign just says, he went in and says, hi, Malfi, here's your orb. He tosses him over, gets the damage. Good amount of practice, and that's what happens. 
I actually thought they were going to get uh, Modern there too. He dropped super, super low, but uh, he does wind up surviving. First blood taken, a little bit sneaky there by Tempest, and they, they make it pay off. Yeah, this is exactly what you do against Tyrael. Uh, not Tyrael, but Tyrael because of the sustain. It's long period of over time healing. And you bring that burst. Once you have the perfect focus, like what Tempest just did, just did right now, can't believe. There's nothing really else for them to actually defend against it, only shield from Tyrael, which was already used. That's right, and this gives uh, Tempest a big uh, macro advantage. As they take not only one, but now their second camp that's headed up top, and uh, as long as Jarell's there, realistically, Thrall, unless he gets a lot of help, is not going to be able to uh, take the uh, 12 o'clock camp. So, uh, advantages little by little coming through for Tempest. Sign up top just to uh, continue that uh, macro. The rotations are always, as always, on point for Tempest. Still needs a little bit more time for Wiz to get her up. Dami forward, but uh, realistically very difficult to kill basically at every stage in the game. And now yes. with Tempest coming down after already being in the area. That was going to be a chance, but no pulse bomb yet gathered from Gondar. And follow up was a little bit too late. I think a good base checking could have been a critical mistake at that moment right before this immortal phase but didn't really gather everything up together for blossom luckily for a good he actually managed to escape because of those reasons first immortal phase and it looks like uh, a lot more even than i would have necessarily expected both teams able to get their immortals down to uh half health and now Modern and Blossom actually going in. Lock down the focus. He is taking down very, very low. Stunned out, but he's still safe in the back line. Gets rooted. Sign actually dove to save Lockdown. Targeting Tracer. After the Pulse Bump, so it's going to be close. Lockdown did survive. And they actually get the better positioning with the Immortal because they have both. Good. Naming. Oh. Gotta say, with the with no skin, the basic skin leaving. Not saying it's anything too terrible, but there's so many skins out there. Dummy, nice job to knock Blossom back away, but now actually Tempest a little bit split up. Blossom are all together right on top of their Immortal, and I mean, we're closing in on the end of this first phase with Blossom in a little bit of a rough spot. We'll see if Tempest can finish things off, and there yes. it is. Because they have massive poke, and Heal from Irel plus Diablo can still be amazing for the backline. That's why Lockdown can survive. The reason why they still picked False Dead. Ooh, Hong Kong missing. Oh, that's he always went back when he was a caster. A lot of the Korean uh, casters always asked him, Why do you always miss your first uh, Stone Bolt or the first few? And then he uh, answered that uh, it's all player manner, you know? Ah, okay. Just to show some humanism in himself. That's what he answered, but of course that's not the real, real, real reason. We know the real reason. It's good sportsmanship, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, now Lockdown coming in uh, is always capable of uh, flying all the way back to the back and getting off a gust. You always have to keep an eye on that, but of course we're pre-level 10, so they don't have to worry about that yet. Maybe they focused again, but they have managed to escape, but they get their mission accomplished, got the fort, focusing on T-Rail. Haha, <laughs> focusing on T-Rail. I was going to say, how funny me, does that sound? Tell, tell me more about uh, focusing your L, or t for that matter. Neither one of that uh, works out very well. Uh -huh. Good luck seeing her today and few, uh, two more days, and I don't think we will get to see her too much after we have six bands. Yeah, six bands uh, really going to accommodate one team banning your L and the other ban banning uh, Rainer. <laughs> That's actually true. And but it's okay because the week after that, we get eight bands, and then we get like, uh, I don't know, 75 bands. I don't know. We'll, we'll have more coming a little bit later on. Don't listen to Rapid, guys. <laughs> no, I'm really exciting for, you know, week week five. They have 52 bands. It's pretty awesome. What are we going to play then? Uh, Mahjong. Aha! That's a game that I'm re not really familiar with, but I, was gonna say, I do know exactly what that is. You become much better at Mahjong once you're over 50. Let's have some Western gets a cleanse. Okay, Modern, uh, barely able to get out of there. And now, I mean, that really does signal the uh, the retreat. I was super worried, but on the other side, uh, not worried for Tempest there as Wiz desperately trying to hang on. 
Chain Lightning does a decent job clearing the wave and pushing them back. Oh? I was more of a chess guy. Actually, uh, what's that game where you just a circle? Go. No, you use circles and X. Uh, Tic-Tac-Toe? Oh, yes. I was the master. I never lost. Oh my. You're so good at I a zero-sum game. <laughs> was it ga game? Focusing on the material, not yeah. a good one. I was going to say, focusing on Ethereal or URL, either way, doesn't, uh, not the most impactful. But we're into Immortal Phase 2, and we'll see if Blossom can come out better on this one. Uh, they had basically even DPS previously. Now it's not quite as even. Getting burned down to half health very, very, very quickly by Tempest. And uh, I don't think this will go quite as well. They're all actually can put out a crazy amount of damage. So. On a defensive build, Tempest, they're about to hit 10, so they're engaging. Very, very right good time. Before, but they're all rooted. Yeah, a little bit of an anti-timing here as the Tempest fight right before they do have that big talent advantage. They might actually hit that right in the middle here, but I don't know where they're going to get the XP for that from. Blossom doing a good job retreating. They haven't taken critical damage right now. They're drawing Tempest into them and now looking to turn it around. And there's that Gust. They just hit 10. I think they were hoping they hit 10 sooner. But because Blossom basically knew they were going to hit 10, even though they had better uh, health advantage and the positioning, they were forced to go back because of that reason. That's exactly the reason why you keep on having advantages and keep on having those. Oh, lightning Breath coming down on a Gondar. He drops very, very low, but the sh shields do save, and he's safe and sound for now. So for Blossom, they, they're playing this so carefully. Yeah, the smell doesn't kill you. It, it, <laughs> it damages you in lots of your ways. But it doesn't kill you all the time. But because what you, but we actually thought what could have been a, a blossom win for this immortal. Tempest is understanding. They just bought enough time. Let's just lose the first half, gather some more experience because we're gonna hit ten. We're gonna win the team fight. We can just get it back right yeah. after. And and honestly, you know, they th might have thought that they would win the team fight because of that ten. They didn't even have it for most of that fight, and they still win. So just. Uh, the most incredibliest play that I have seen uh, from them, and they're uh, not making Blossom's job of coming back easy. Kono's actually missing a lot in this game, we could see. Onto the chase hammer. Trying, trying to make to up for it. Right up at the front line. Lots of CC on a sign. I don't think he worries about that too much. Lockdown comes around from side. Gondar recalls already. So not going to be having the perfect target for False Bomb. There's the Gust to disengage. Yeah, the Lightning Breath kind of looked like it almost healed there. It did not deal a whole lot of damage. Sign going back in, getting uh, knocked back out. But I don't think he cares too much about that. Uh, I think Sign is uh, actually almost exactly where he wants to be. He does go down, but look at what that does for the rest of his team. Baits them all in to die. That was a deep dive by Sign. And I think that was they were also waiting for a chance to actually isolate one, grab one target, because Hyde was holding a seven-sided this entire time. Blossom, they stayed all together. Not just solo target, even uh, when there was a when there was a big gust on the three targets, the mm -hmm. two were staying together. So Hyde was really waiting for the perfect chance chance. Never, never got really, it. Yeah, never really got to use that. Nicely done by Blossom staying together against that seven-sided, really giving no chance for Sign to grab one out of there as well. The power of friendship triumphs once again. They all put their hands in and drew one of those uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! smiley faces on it. And they were uh, they were preserved from the uh, evil seven-sided. They are collecting the Exodia pieces. That's true. And they got two. I was going to say, they. it feels really good when you have like four in your hand. You're like, well, I'm, a, I'm about to win. But it turns out that four Exodia pieces are just about as good as one because they, they don't do anything. So, uh -huh. And uh, the opponent has blue-eyed white dragon for some reason every single time. And you just have to trust your teammate, just like the heart of the cards. Well, hey, I know we're being way too anime, but we're getting the <laughs> reference. All I was gonna say is like, uh, you know, as long as we play by the TV rules, anything can do anything at any point in time. So nothing really matters, and everything's made up. But uh, unfortunately, this is HTC Korea and Heroes. Uh, things do actually make a big difference for Tempest. I actually thought uh, you're always gonna go in for the flank behind them, uh, but they're not willing to pull the trigger on that just yet. Haymaker, let's see what kind of play making. Konkono can actually do in this case. I, I think Avatar was actually a not bad one. I think he's trusting in the shield of Tyrael as well because they do have double tank. Yeah, I mean, we saw a big Haymaker 
uh, excuse me, in that last fight. And I think we're just going to continue to see that. Uh, been more popular, at least, uh, used to seeing Avatar, but glad to see Hong Kono bringing out the Haymaker again. What do you think is going to be his main target or the purpose for, for picking that instead of Avatar? Maybe to just disengage when, when someone charges in like Diablo. They charge in, just have the Haymaker, make sure it just goes out. Make Sign's life uh, uh -huh. a little bit Make more sure difficult. Mary Day uh, is saved because you can't really leave out Mary Day. They felt that at level 3 or 4 at the bottom camp. They have to have at least one t either Tyrael or uh, Murden to save Mary Day there. Well, and the first half, we'll see if uh, Tempest can uh, re engage effectively. For Blossom, it feels like they. I don't know, they're, they're not playing scared, especially with that. Haymaker pick. Every fight they fight is one that they think that they can win. They're just uh, not <laughs> quite there yet. Yeah, because of the macro, they just have to right. force themselves back here. Yes. That's another Immortal 1 by Tempest because of the talent difference most of the times and also the macro control that they actually have. I mean, it's been there from level 1, right? They made that kind of sneaky play down bottom to take the uh, uh, 6 o'clock uh, camp and then rotated up top for 12, taking all of theirs along the way, and it just never really let up so uh, the series isn't over but i think this actually shows a pretty a big level gap between these two teams still because mm -hmm. blossom when they go into the next objective phase they don't really have anything but tempest they're always having one more compared to blossom oh, look at that Murden. he's gonna have the playmaker go trying to spot him let's not see him at all but they just have to buy time false that's still on top oh, getting the oh. keep down here we go. Yeah, Falstad kind of the MVP of this entire situation, using that global to maximum effectiveness. And now, actually, uh, this might be an opportunity for They don't have to fight. They Blossom can dash out, they can teleport, they can wrath in. Tommy buying time right now. Yeah, everybody's just buying time for lockdown. He actually does finish that keep off. Uh, wow, that's just incredible play. Tempest, their macro, just insane. That was a big play for Onkano. Didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, that may actually continue until the end of the game. Playmaker not really making the plays as, ooh, Gondar soaking that missiles. I mean, hey, at least he completed his quest, right? Uh, uh, that's, I guess that's one one good news. But there are lots of bad news for them. I'm trying to come up with any good news I can find. Dami, I mean, they're trying to make any catch happen that they can. Nice stun there, but seven sided does come through. Doesn't find any kills, but at least saves Karazim. And the disengage here is all that Tyne really cares about, or Tempest rather. Uh, Big Fissure almost grabs lockdown, but he's safe, and so is the rest of Tempest. Yeah, great disengage, and for the past two minutes. Uh, Tempest get the keep on the top, and then also damage is the one on the bottom without the fountain. So they win overall. They're actually going to engage by more time because if you buy more time here, the ones out, uh, at the top lane is going to stack even more. Focusing on the Gondar, Tracer recalls, barely survives, Whoa, goes down. Oh, does get taken down. That is a big pickoff, and now oh, Lightning Breath zoning a little bit more. And I don't think Tempest are going to be running away for much longer. Uh, Ice Block there is saved. Malfuria is saved for a little bit, but not for long. Does go down finally, and just one after another. Blossom are hitting the dirt. Continuing even more. Oh, got juked. Ha uh, ha, uh, where'd you go? Sick juke there by <laughs> Modern. How did he even actually I'll drew in all the way back there? That was a, possibly like the one of the longest one I've ever seen. I was gonna say, I think he threw it down and then just ran really, really uh -huh. fast. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there's still many things that I do not know about heroes, and that distance is one of them. I guess you just really don't expect. So we can't blame uh, Tempest for maybe having their legs broken a little bit, but uh, they're going to go back to the hospital, get them fixed right up. And even on crutches, I think they might still be able to fin finish out the rest of this game. Going to be very tough. Uh, still two levels down. Blossom. Still have an entire level to catch up for the 16. Very powerful one. I wonder... The oh. bottom. They win the halftime as well. Okay, wrap it. So what I was gonna say is, it, you know, it must be weird to play against teams like Tempest and uh, and uh, not KSV but Genji because you have to play uh, Hots without getting any objectives. Uh, it's a difficult way to play. But now trying to contest this Immortal it could be one of the last ones we actually even get to see. A sick gust separates on Kono, blows everyone from Blossom back, and now it's going to be the re-engage. Blossom on top of the Immortal. Tempest, they recognize they do not have to fight this. They really do not. They got the camp. Troll then. Just have to 
Pablo goes straight dive in. Re great recall. He does survive. Oh, lightning breath, though. But those go down. But that's going to be a trade with the Leeming. So no no more reset onto Leeming. Loss of days. Still have damage, but Wiz holding on to Wiz. Low down. And now the follow up modern. The next casualty. Uh, and won't be alive for much longer. Boom goes the dynamite. Oh, the storm bolt. I think that was going to be a kill if <laughs> it landed. Lockdown way too fast on that birdie. Oh, no. Adami kind of playing with his food a little bit at this point. <laughs> the outplay. Merry Day. He's still got it. And they're on the core. Camp is already on the court. Merry Day without the ice block. Oh, actually, but Merry Day though. Oh, he does. He still has a defender. So outplay. What an outplay, Merry Day. He might be on a team that is losing, but he just picked up the moral victory. And even the haymaker actually. <laughs> no way, Dami lives this. He still survives. Uh, he just goes down. But okay, they get him in the end. But that's the core, and that is the three. Uh, which what we thought actually would. Dami having a physical, uh, very negative physical condition today, playing in today. Look at him, he's happy. He's all good now. I, I was going to say, he probably felt a little bit better as that series was, series was going on, and he did dominate. So really, at the end of the day, uh, it's what we expected, another win for Tempest. Blossom had signs of life. They always looked close in each of their losses, but they were losses, and still only Ballistics has managed to take one win off of Tempest. You can even argue that that was Tempest beating Tempest. I think this gives us a big, big understanding where these teams actually stand now. We're in week three, still a few more weekends to go. But I think Blossom, there's that uh, gap between them and the top three. I think they may, may still manage to get into the top four, which is still going for Eastern Clash. But breaking into the top three seems very tough. We saw a pretty big gap between Tempest and Blossom, how they were handling the macro. Tempest was always a step further of next move. What they were trying to do, Blossom, what they tried to do, was already getting read by a Tempest all the time in all the games tonight. Yeah, I mean, it's been really cool to see Blossom blossom. They're taking flight, but I think they flew a little bit too close to the sun here uh, today and uh, wound up getting 0-3'd. I, I mean, honestly, you know, we make the meme about so many 0-3s, but it is just always so impressive to see the teams that are doing that, that are making that happen have such a good reason for that, and that is that they are just some of the best in the world. So uh, watching them hard at work here, Tempest, uh, well-deserving of their 3-0 victory. They climb up in the standings, and uh, I guess it looks a little bit weird because they'll eclipse Gen G for a moment, but that all should go right back to normal uh, after our next series. Yep, Blossom did, couldn't really have an outstanding day. I think it was possible for them to actually have. The moment I heard, there will be switches between Gondar and Honkano. Which, there wasn't any today. Onkono was on the tank, on there mm -hmm. on DPS. Uh, maybe if they switched, a little bit better of a result. They bring some Garrosh in, I think that, which was open many, many times. And I wonder why not. I will try to answer questions if I get a chance in the break on Gondar. But we'll get to hear from one of the members from Tempest. Yesterday was good. Maybe uh, Tommy's still pretty sick. Maybe you can't really interview him. as um, It may just be lockdown or sign. I would love to actually hear from Sign as the main tank. He has been very solid, and we do have a lovely hostess as well. Well, I was going to say that uh, Sign has just been on fire. I mean, I was watching, you know, Blossom as they have kind of risen up through the standings, and I'm like, okay, well, wow, you know, Honkono is really coming back into his role in pro plays, really doing well, uh, but I really hope we do get a chance to hear from Sign because he is just killing it as always, but it's always uh, fun to see that in action. Here's a Recap of our game. Tempest, of course, 3 0 ing. We have to show you guys the slide. We're required by law. Which law are you talking about? The Korean the, the one same or law the US or the G uh, HGC? This is a EEZ law. What's that? Uh, well, besides spelling easy, it is the uh, extended economic zone that emanates out from coastal regions. There's your lesson for the day. Let your parents. Uh, let you watch HGC because you can tell them it's educational. And you get to hear us all the time. <laughs> well, that's the other reason your parents will let us watch. I was uh, not allowed to watch esports when I was growing up because they didn't exist. I mean, they did. I just didn't know about them. Aha. Uh -huh. I was in Korea, so I always okay. watched StarCraft. Well, that's a little was, bit unfair. Even when I was 11 years old or, or 10 years old. And StarCraft, beginning of esports there. And it was pretty fun as... It was a quick 3-0, and we may just jump into highlight as soon as possible. I was going to say, I think there were so many highlights from every single...